Has Google finally done it? Have they killed Bitcoin with this brand new chip? The short answer is no. The long answer is eventually. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Gen Z BTC. It's me, Satoshi Guapamoto. And today we're going over whether or not Google's Willow quantum computer chip with 105 qubits worth of physical processing power is able to destroy the SHA-256 algorithm, which backs and protects Bitcoin, amongst many other things in the real world that you might not know about. Let's go over it today. All right. First off, this is a diagram of the chip. All right. I'm the best artist on YouTube. That's pretty much what it looks like. I'll throw up a graphic on screen so you can see it. And it has 105 physical qubits worth of data, of processing power, whatever you want to call it. Right. And this means that it can process computations that it would take other computers millions of years to do. It can literally do millions of years worth of work in seconds. Okay. That is insane. They literally talk about in the blog, how this is kind of proof of a multiverse. It's insane. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, you know what I mean? I'm a scientist or a quantum physicist. Okay. I'm barely a political scientist. You know what I mean? So absolutely incredible. Long story short, how many qubits, right? It has 105 qubits. How many qubits would you need in order to hack SHA-256? Well, the answer is you need 13 million. You're going to need 13 million physical qubits in order to hack SHA-256. This one has 105. All right. So although this is a marvel of technology, it does not mean that we are going to be seeing Bitcoin get hacked and sent to zero anytime soon. Okay. Okay. Now there is a difference between now we're going to get into the part of the video because that's the information you really came for. Can the chip hack the Bitcoin? No. Okay. Uh, now what we can do is you can take 13 divided by 105 uh, comes out to like, I don't know, like 200,000. Okay. You're going to need about 200,000 of these chips in order to brute force a SHA-256 algorithm, all of them working together at one time. Now, is that difficult to do? Not really. Can this be done in 10 years? Yes. Can it be done in five years? Maybe, maybe in five years. So in just five years, you will be able to easily break a SHA-256 algorithm, okay? You'll be easily able to break Bitcoin, okay? That's not good. But let's go over some solutions, okay? On this channel, we're about solutions. We're not just sitting here crying and getting scared about everything all the time, all right? So now we get into the part where I'm going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about, okay? I am humble enough to admit, hey, you know what? This is not my field of expertise. I don't really know what's going on, okay? Do I watch YouTube? Yes. Do I use AI? Yes. Okay, that's my research. Let's get into it. First off, what you need to understand is that there are... Ones and zeros, okay, in the universe. There's up and down, okay? There's a binary, all right? That's how computers think. That's how they talk, all right? Now, a quantum computer is able to do both up and down simultaneously. It can be in a state of both up and down, a superposition, okay? Not just one position, not just one position, a superposition of up and down, okay? This is why we are talking about qubits, all right? Computers, normal computers talk in bits, zero and one, Quantum computers talk in qubits. A qubit is both zero and one at the same time. Well, how can it be both zero and one at the same time? It has to be one or the other. No, it doesn't. It's called quantum computer, okay? It's called quantum physics, bro. Watch some YouTube, figure it out. But the truth of the matter is it can literally be both at the exact same time. Now, the difference between qubits is that here is what I'm going to call a physical qubit. Okay, we're gonna put a P. This is a physical qubit, up and down, like this. This, this is a logical, L, logical qubit. Okay, I did a circle, a filled in circle, because it's just so many different things at one time. All right, it is all possibilities at once. This is a physical, uh, a logical qubit. Logical qubits are the most powerful uh, and most error free version of a qubit. Okay. By error free, what do they mean? I'm going to be completely honest. I don't really know. I don't really know. All that I know is that quantum computing and quantum physics is a extremely precise science. Okay. It goes down to the, you know, 20th decimal. All right. Physical qubits have that tiny point zero 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 one 
percent of error in them, right? And that error is what leads them to not be logical qubits. Logical qubits have no error. The 105 qubits that make up the logic of the uh, Willow chip are physical. These are physical qubits, 105 physical qubits. You need 13 million physical qubits in order to break SHA-256. You would need significantly less if they were all logical. I believe you would only need about 2,300 logical qubits in order to break SHA-256. So what can we do about this? Because it's not that hard to mass produce these chips because technology is deflationary. Over time, all technology gets cheaper and it becomes easier to make no matter what because that's just how technology is, all right? When you discover new technology, it makes it easier to discover the next technology. You understand? That's why fatback TVs are really easy to make now. They're so easy to make and no one wants them because they suck. Why would I want a fatback when I can get a flat screen, okay? I don't even want a flat screen. Why would I want a flat screen when I could get like a, a LED? Why would I want an LED when I could get an OLED LED, okay? Why would I get an OLED if I can get a Q LED? All this other stuff, okay? You understand what I'm saying? So right now, we're still at the part where we're using physical qubits. The 105 physical qubits are really not a big threat. What is a big threat is when we start getting to logical qubits, being able to easily and mass produce logical qubits. So what can we do? What can we do in order to stop this? Well, what we can do is we can go from SHA-256 to SHA-512. Yes, that's a real thing. So the SHA algorithm is just basically, you know, two to the 128. Okay, we're getting a little bit clustered here. That's SHA-256, okay? Two times 128, you get 256. 512 is just two to the 256, right? Two times 200 to 256, you get 512, okay? That's pretty much how the hashing algorithm works, all right? These are not small numbers. Two to the 128, is an insane number, all right? That is a massive number, okay? That's 10 to the 77. That's a number with 78 digits, okay? Not easy to keep up with that. So what you have to do in order to continually defend the Bitcoin network and all networks, okay, was what you need to understand is, all right, let me tell you something, Google, uses SHA-256. This is not just a Bitcoin problem. YouTube uses SHA-256, okay? What are you gonna watch while you eat, bro, if they crack 256? Nothing. You're gonna have to get hospitalized because you're gonna have to eat food without content. Are you a savage? Are you an animal? No, I didn't think so, okay? Even the Romans knew, hey, you know what? We're gonna eat while we watch a lion, uh, you know, destroy this man and bite his face off. Because they knew to eat with their entertainment, okay? They weren't barbarians. So if they hack YouTube, you're not going to be able to eat, little bro. Let that sink in. All the iPad babies are going to starve. Um, <laughs> Apple ID uses SHA-256, okay? All those videos that you're hiding from your significant other, yeah, they're leaked, little bro. Uh, Amazon Web Services, SHA-256. Google, again, SHA-256. Google Chrome, literally, SHA-256. Microsoft Azure, okay, and most of the Microsoft platform, SHA-256, okay? So uh, Bank of America, Chase Bank, SHA-256. So if this gets broken, it's not going to be good for Earth, all right? It's not going to be good for the planet. It's going to be really bad, all right? So what we need to do is we need to, one, implement quantum-resistant cryptographic hashing algorithms, say that 10 times fast, and, all right, we need to continually upgrade the algorithms that we do have. Is Bitcoin upgradable? Yes, it's digital, programmable, upgradable money, all right? Is it hard to upgrade? Yes, it is. But guess what? If everyone runs the risk of all their money going to zero and getting stolen by someone, everyone's going to want to implement that change. How do you implement a change on Bitcoin? Well, all you have to do is run the updated software. Okay, so people are already working on this. They're constantly working on this. Uh, you can learn to code and work on it yourself. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you don't have to trust the devs uh, or, or any people that you see online uh, uh, posting, hey, you know, I found a new way to upgrade the Bitcoin protocol, whatever. If you're an individual dev, you can upgrade Bitcoin by yourself and then release it. Okay, you can already do this. Everyone can already do this. It's open source protocol. 
Uh, now, the thing is, will people run your code? Will people actually run your version of Bitcoin? The answer typically is no, right? That's what happened with Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Satoshi's vision. That was their version of Bitcoin. No one wanted to run it. It went to zero, okay? It went to zero against the real Bitcoin, which is BTC. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a consensus, right? Currently, everyone runs the same software. There's going to be an upgrade to the software. People are going to switch to that version of the software. And then that one's going to be quantum resistant, okay? It's, good. it's a game of cat and mouse. And it's going to continue to happen. Uh, banks, Google, all these other companies, Apple, they're not just going to let all of their stuff get hacked. Okay. They are also going to work on, hey, we just dropped a brand new AI based uh, security model that is quantum resistant. You know, the same way that they do with all of their other technology, right? Oh, we're adding fingerprint scanner, face scanner, all this other stuff. Right? That was all the way of protecting people's privacy, even though ironically, they steal your privacy and sell it. Anyways, they are working to stop quantum attacks, okay? Being quantum resistant is extremely important, all right? Not just for individuals, but for nation states, okay? You don't want all of the information of your citizens being stolen by a, 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 an enemy country, right? And then being used in a nefarious way. You don't want your launch codes being stolen. I guarantee you the launch codes are quantum resistant. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. You know what I mean? America, they're pretty far behind on like everything, so I wouldn't be surprised. But you know what I mean. At the end of the day, Bitcoin is upgradable and this is not really a problem for today, but it will be a problem for tomorrow. Do we have the solution? Yes, we do. We just have to implement it. So don't be too scared. This is not really that big of a deal, but it will be a big deal in the future. Just make sure that you're staying vigilant, you're keeping up to date with what's going on in the world. And when it comes time to upgrade your keys or upgrade your Bitcoin protocol, your Bitcoin core software, then make sure that you go ahead and do that. And you do that from a reputable source, all right? That's gonna take a lot of research and it's gonna take a lot of verification, right? But we can all do this. We're gonna be just fine. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share it with someone who might find it enjoyable. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Stack sats or die trying.